Hello. This is part two of a series on, let's say, gun factoids. Now, gun culture people have dwelled in the world of guns for years, so they could be at an advantage in regards to the weapons specifically. So this here serves as a primer for the average person who is in favor of gun control and who may not have the time to do a uh, do some crash research uh, on, on, on some of these issues. Okay, so this episode focuses on some basic essential information for debating gun advocates. Okay, people of the gun culture are fanatical. Guns are sort of a fetish for them. So despite their small numbers, they contribute funds to pro-gun groups at a rate 17 times that of individuals who are concerned about gun control contribute to gun control groups. This has got to change. We need to and can outspend them. Here are the most prominent organizations who have taken a stand against unlimited gun rights and violence. Please join one or more, but I would prefer you put an emphasis on those that are directly involved in political campaigns and lobbying. We must absolutely counterbalance the gun rights before people advocacy groups. Okay, moving on to the next issue. Here's some basic background on American militias. At the end of the Revolutionary War, there was a vigorous debate over the structure that the military would take. George Washington took the middle position and he wrote, We are too poor to maintain a standing army adequate to our needs. Like many, he also expressed concerns over the potential corrupting power of a standing military. So his proposal was to have a corps of just over 2,000 permanent officers to be supplemented by militias as needed. And this was pretty much adopted. Okay, fast forward. A century ago, in 1903, the Militia Act was passed by Congress and it brought about a well-regulated militia. This act mandated formal standards for the militias and formed them into the National Guard. The Guard is a Federal Reserve Force, that is, they can be called up when, and put into Federal service. And it is comprised of Air, Army, and Naval components. Under this Militia Act, states do have the option to maintain their own militia units outside of the Guard. These units are defined as the unorganized militia. I'm not aware of any state that utilizes this provision, but they do have the option. By definition, militia are organized groups, so random, scattered gun owners do not compromise a militia, for there is no organization present. As for those that are grouped into self-described militia, they are not state-sponsored, so they are not covered by this provision. They are but potential recruits for such state militia, should an emergency warrant. Okay, moving on to the next item. As you know, gun culture people will often game the discussion by playing semantics. So here's some useful information to deal with that. First. Properly speaking, that which is loaded into a gun's chamber is a cartridge. Technically, a bullet, sometimes referred to as a round, is just a projectile at the tip of the cartridge. When considering the destructive capability of bullets, it is not enough to just consider the caliber, you know, which is the approximate diameter, of bullets. The behavior of the bullet when it hits its target is also very important. Some are designed to fragment or to expand to cause maximal damage, while some others are designed to pierce armor. In addition, the ballistic power of bullets must be taken into consideration. Generally speaking, the more gunpowder in the shell behind the bullet, the more distance and or destructive power those bullets will have. Second, in the gun trade and culture, tactical weapons is a term they use for what our side refers to as assault weapons. Assault weapons and tactical weapons are the same thing. So their implication that assault weapons don't exist 
on this basis is nonsense. And one more thing. Often gun aficionados will claim assault weapons can't be defined. Well, I've got news for them. They can be. Here is how they are defined by the state of California. The bottom line to all this is gun control should not be limited to regulating firearms and accessories, but also needs to be extended to ammunition and militias. Bye.